Welcome to the Tweedler's video game video review for Paper Mario Color Splash. When I was a wee baboo, I used to drag my parents to the local video rental store every week so I could rent Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64. Over and over and over. I was obsessed with the art style, the world, the music, the characters, everything about the game. My poor parents must have honestly spent more renting that game than they would have just buying it. My love for Paper Mario would be cemented in 2004 with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which was released on a Nintendo GameCube. At the time, it was mind-blowing to see a new Paper Mario game with a bigger world, cleaner art, sharper writing, and a Bowser that actually wasn't the main bad guy. Then, just three years later, while I was in middle school, we got Super Paper Mario. Once again, they had stepped up their game. A streamlined combat system allowing for a tighter focus on clever writing and 3D puzzle solving. Not to mention an engrossing story where Mario teams up with his brother Luigi, Princess Peach, and even Bowser to save not only the Mushroom Kingdom, but the entire multiverse. My expectations were sky high and my imagination was soaring with possibilities for the future of this franchise. It wouldn't be until 2012 when we would get another Paper Mario game. I was thrilled! until I found out it was on the 3DS. I was pretty bummed since I didn't have a 3DS, so I couldn't play it. That was until the reviews came out and I learned that the game fell prey to Nintendo's infatuation for gimmicky innovation. Gone was the freeform open combat from Super Paper Mario and the turn-based experience progression combat of the first two. It was now about using single-use stickers with seemingly no progression. I figured I dodged a bullet on this one, but I couldn't help but be disappointed. For the first time, the Paper Mario series perfect streak was broken. Jump to June 2016 when I caught wind of a new upcoming console game for Paper Mario. Finally, the series was back, and in HD no less. My expectations were soaring once again, so I hopped online and brought up the trailer to see what I was in for. At first, I was blown away. Princess Peach shows up on Mario's doorstep with a mysterious letter. Right off the bat, it was clear production value was no joke as this cutscene promised intrigue and adventure in an all new Paper Mario game! Then I saw Mario collecting cards. Uh oh. Then using the cards in combat. No, 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 no. We aren't seriously gonna have another sticker star in our hands, are we? October rolled around, the reviews came out, and. unfortunately, yes. The gameplay was once again, by all accounts, a gimmicky mess. I guess I just had to accept that the Paper Mario franchise was crap now and wait until they realized that their audience doesn't want this kind of gameplay. But then, just one month later, I was on YouTube catching up on my subscriptions when I came across the completionist review for Paper Mario Color Splash. This was the first time I had really seen any gameplay from the title and I found myself feeling very nostalgic. Only five minutes in, I had to stop the video, and I told myself, I don't want to see anymore. I'm getting this game. Dan their views, I want to play a new Paper Mario game. For the record, I did finish watching their view. Link below. By Christmas, I had my hands on the game. I was excited and nervous as I popped it into my Wii U. Here, I was able to see the opening cutscene from the trailer half a year ago in proper HD on my television. Suddenly... I was a little kid again and beyond excited as the story began. As discussed, Princess Peach comes to Mario in the night with a mysterious letter. But it's not a letter at all. It's a Mushroom Kingdom citizen, a toad, drained of its color, folded and stamped. They realize that it's from Prism Island and more specifically Port Prisma. With this knowledge, Peach and Mario set off on the stormy seas to get to the bottom of this mystery. They find the port abandoned and are introduced to Huey a magical flying paint can that helps clue us into what may be happening. Turns out that this empty fountain in the center of town should be a rainbow fountain of paint. Paint, which is supplied by the six big paint stars. But they seem to have gone missing. But no time for that, as we hear a commotion and run off to see what's going on. We catch a straw-wielding shy guy in the act of sucking the paint from a helpless toad. But, before we can start fighting, Mr. Bucket stops us and gives us a tutorial for the new gameplay more on that later. With the Shy Guy thwarted, we are given the ability for Mr. Bucket to repaint colorless spots in the world, as well as color-drained citizens. With his new power, Mario leaves Princess Peach in Port Prisma and sets off with his new friend to restore color to Prism Island, and find the six missing big paint stars. Right off the bat, it's clear that Mario hasn't changed one bit. 
He's still the lovable goofball who's quick to action and is always looking for the next adventure. Peach as well is done perfectly. She is kind, considerate, compassionate, especially to the totes who are their usual innocent, if not oblivious selves. Hapless, but with hearts of gold. Unfortunately, Mr. Bucket over here isn't as likable. He plays the role of your navvy for this game. You, you know, the guide character who stops the game every 10 minutes to tell you something you've already known for the past hour. That, and he's the only partner you will get in this game. He's a short-tempered, self-righteous know-it-all that holds your hand throughout the entire story, stating the obvious at every turn. Not to mention he's the one who introduces you to the new combat system, and... And yeah, it's a total train wreck. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most important video games for game developers to look at. It's a shining example of an incredible game being entirely derailed through gameplay alone. You see, the previous Paper Mario titles had an experience-based level system. The more you fought, the more experience points you got, the stronger Mario gets. There is no system like that in this game. Instead, the player finds battle cards around the world that deal varying levels of damage. Upon defeating an enemy, Mario may get a few coins or another card if he is really lucky. But each fight will be at a loss as the cards used in battle are more valuable than the rewards for defeating the enemies. So, if there's no experience-based system to get stronger, and fighting enemies cost cards that are more valuable than the rewards for defeating the enemies, what is the point of combat? Therein lies the biggest problem with the game. Combat isn't just useless, it's detrimental to progression. After a few fights, I found myself going out of my way to avoid enemies and frustratingly fleeing from battles that I accidentally bumped into. Why waste the cards when I can save them for the mandatory boss fights, right? With this in mind, I found myself staring down at the Wii U gamepad, holding down the flea button for about a tenth of my total playtime in the game, becoming more and more frustrated every time Mario would turn around to flee only to trip, making me wait for the enemy to attack before I could attempt to flee again. But even with all of those amazing cards I had saved up, I realized that they were seemingly useless in boss battles. You see, every boss is defeated by a specific thing card. They're like summons from Final Fantasy. But they're missable and mandatory to progression through the game. Not only that, there's usually no indication to which thing card you would need, where to find them, or when to use them. That's right, they can be used too early in a fight, which means you might as well load up your last save because you can't win. Even worse, some boss fights require multiple thing cards to not only be used at a specific time, but in a specific order. The worst offender being the stake, which you have to cook just right through combat. I mean, it sounds like a really clever idea, right? But you have to do just the right amount of damage to it, then use the salt and pepper thing card, the grill thing card, and then the lemon thing card, all in that order. If you do too much or too little damage before you use up all of your thing cards, you wouldn't know until after the fight. This meant you either had to load up your last save, or trek all the way back to Port Prisma to buy more thing cards, which you can only have one of each at a time. This took me a half dozen tries, even with a walkthrough. A walkthrough, by the way, which is almost certainly necessary to beat some of the later bosses because the game does such a poor job preparing you for each boss encounter. How does this happen? This game was developed by Intelligent Systems. They've been in the business since 1986. Not only did they make every other Paper Mario game, they are also the developers behind Advance Wars, Fire Emblem, and Metroid. Damn! Oh, and if you're thinking about getting this game for multiple people, like a few kids to share, or maybe just you and your significant other, there's only one save file, so keep that in mind before you buy. It's not all bad, though. Uh, some genuinely brilliant moments slip through. The shining example being the Dark Blue Inn. Here, Mario and Mr. Bucket show up at what appears to be a derelict mansion, only to find that it's actually an eerie hotel fallen on hard times. We have all the classic scary tropes, with phone calls to the front desk from empty rooms, books flying off the shelves all on their own, and carts moving around with no one to push them. But most importantly, there's no mandatory combat here. The game is allowed to immerse the players in the world without breaking concentration through battle. It really shows the potential that this game truly had. I mean, the visuals are dark yet bold, the music is surprisingly unnerving, 
It was at this moment that I realized that this game was crafted by a team of experts who knew how to blend visuals and music together to elicit the appropriate emotions out of the player. And this isn't any of that fake stuff either. It's the real deal, with real performers and a real orchestra. And it shows as the quality of music here is at a level rarely seen outside of a Nintendo published game. When the game makes you want to feel like you're traveling through the American Midwest, it's like... When it wants you to feel like a pirate explorer discovering some kind of Skull Island, it's like... And, when it makes you want to feel like you're relaxing on a tropical beach, it's like... Truly, it takes a team of experts to produce music of this quality. But, just as important is the team of experts it takes to implement the appropriate visuals. It's amazing the way they were able to utilize a wide variety of craft materials to give Paper Mario Color Splash the unique look that it does. Given that nearly half of the game credits are artists, I guess I shouldn't really be surprised. Seriously, shout out to art director Masahiko Nageya for being able to coordinate an art team this large and being able to maintain such a consistent and focused quality to the feel of the art. A round of applause, please. Well, with all that being said and done, it's time to jump into spoilers, so if I've piqued your interest and you don't want the game spoiled for you, now is the time to bow out. Ready go. Okay, let's go. After exploring for a bit, we find out that Bowser, Mario's classic arch nemesis, is behind the missing big paint stars and the army of paint-sucking shy guys. You see, he planned on dyeing his shell in Port Prisma's paint fountain for fun. But, when he hopped in and started spinning, he accidentally mixed together a toxic concoction of black paint. This overcame his body and mind, making him even more powerful and evil. Now he seeks to collect as much paint as possible from around Prism Island in order to create toxic black paint bombs to cover the land. While we are out adventuring for the big paint stars, he returns to Port Prisma and snatches up Princess Peach to bring her to his flying castle. Because, of course he does, come on. After collecting all six big paint stars and returning them to Port Prisma's Fountain, we form the Rainbow Bridge, straight to Bowser's Flying Castle. Unfortunately, we can't get up it ourselves, but luckily, Luigi shows up with his go-kart to give us a ride. Before long, we're at the final boss fight, Mario vs. Bowser. After knocking some black paint off him, we realize that this is definitely the goofball Bowser from the previous Paper Mario games in a genuinely funny scene. Turns out, he's being completely controlled by the black paint covering his body. After some hard fighting, they defeat black paint Bowser and rescue the princess. They then make tracks for the exit, as before they fought Bowser, they set off a chain reaction of black paint bombs in his production facility. But, just as our heroes pile onto Luigi's cart, Mr. Bucket says he's gonna stay behind in order to clean up all the black paint from the castle before it crashes to the ground. Our heroes make their escape, as he successfully sucks up all of the paint from the castle. He then flies into space, exploding in a noble sacrifice which saved all of Prism Island. We won't forget you, Mr. Bucket. Wait, what was his name again? Uh, <clears throat> well, even then, not really. As you see, if you 100% complete the game like I did because I'm a complete idiot, he falls from the sky back into Prisma's fountain where we first met him, safe and sound. So with everything I've discussed, how do I ultimately feel about the game? Ultimately, I feel like Paper Mario Color Splash is a truly tragic game. A masterpiece buried under a mountain of unbelievable waste of time and absolutely baffling gameplay decisions, especially from such a highly regarded developer. The music and art is superb, but the gameplay is infuriating. So much so that I couldn't even enjoy the game during its highlight moments because I was always upset from the gauntlet of enemies I was just avoiding or running from, or I was dreading the next trial and error boss fight. It truly is astonishing how gameplay can ruin a game with so much potential. 
Hopefully intelligent systems will realize that this type of gameplay is toxic to the overall production like a batch of black paint. Here's hoping that the next Paper Mario game can bring back a style of combat to complement the music, art, and story, instead of detracting from them. But the game is as it is. There is always the future though, and as far as I can see, the future is looking bright. Thank you for joining me for my video game video review of Paper Mario Color Splash. If you're interested, I also have a video with some further reflections on the game. You know, some tweaks I would like to see to improve the title. If you enjoyed the video, let me know with a thumbs up like, and if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I also have another channel, Professor Tweedler, where I look at our history as well as the lore of some of our favorite fictional worlds and characters. So, if you're the kind of person who'd be interested in that, hop over there and give it a look. Until we meet again, live and let rock.